I was quite nervous, I must say, and then surprised that they'd got the whole thing together and my wife had known for three weeks and she hadn't cracked and told me. And she didn't sleep very well for three weeks, but I thought... Uh, and then just um, the delight of meeting people I hadn't met, in some cases, for quite a while. It was a, it was a, a big party afterwards. Total surprise. I was on a climbing wall at the Sobel Sports Centre in Islington. I climbed up and came down. They said, yeah, go up again. And I came down and there was Eamon Andrews with his big red book. So it was a complete surprise and they'd set it up uh, it saying to me that someone else was going to interview me for a different programme. So I had no idea at all. Um, there, there were bits, I thought, uh, there were one or two people there who hadn't been that important and one or two people who had been important who weren't there. But I know one uncle... Um, was not invited because they thought he'd be a bit of a security risk. He'd tell everybody where he's going. And he was like that. He was um, uh, very open. Uh, and I don't think he could have kept a secret. So um, from that point of view, but I wish he'd been there because he'd walked actually quite a lot of the John O'Groats to Land's End walk, which I did. He walked with me um, the length of Cornwall, which is about 100 miles. And um, I think he should have been in it. But um, I, I can appreciate their, their problems. Uh, everybody must have said, well, he won't keep quiet. Uh, well, I knew from the start that my one long-distance guest, who was supposed to be ringing from a, a jungle in Papua New Guinea or something like that, I knew he was around because the sound quality on the phone call he was supposed to have made was so good. And back in those days, you would have you would have told, you know, like nowadays you might not know the difference, but I thought uh, he'll be the guest on at the <laughs> last. <laughs> so I, I was um, I, I was pretty certain, uh, ah, well, they've got to have somebody coming a long way. That would be it. And he was the last one to come on. And the others I was very pleased to see because the people I'd climbed the Eiger with and the Matterhorn, and it was nice to see them because they, they worked hard making sure, because I'm... Was, well, I'm even slower now, but it was quite slow, so they they worked. If they'd been with an able-bodied climber, they might have done the climbs in half the time, so they worked for their money, basically. I lost my legs when I was 19. I come from a Methodist background, and as you know, Methodists don't drink. Um, my parents didn't drink until they were about 65, well after the This Is Your Life program, uh, when they <laughs> they decided that brandy and ribena were medicinally very bre um, beneficial, so they drank a lot of brandy and ribena. Um, but I wasn't used to drinking. I had um, a few pints in a pub one night, and I was camping in some woods, and I took a shortcut, fell down the railway embankment, and I got hit by a train. And... Uh, you know, they say, they say youngsters um, go off the lines. Um, uh, I went on the line, unfortunately, <laughs> that night. But I, I was saved by... I came to, I lost enough blood to lose alcohol, and I came to, I called for help. And there was a young man who'd been to the cinema on his own for the first time. He was 14, and the film had broken down. So he was four minutes late coming back home, four minutes later than he would have been. He heard me call for help ran home, called the police, and they came and found me. So it was touch and go. I was also, I was on the outside of, it looks like I'd crossed three rails, and I was on the outside of the last rail, so that my legs were taken off basically by a crush injury, rather than chopped off by the flange on the wheel. Otherwise I would have bled to death. It was shown at the first party we had at the studio, within a few minutes, actually, it was, it was maybe half an hour later, there there it was um, on the screens. Uh, I remember one of the guests disappearing. He had to be put to bed because he was so drunk. Um, but just getting all, all those people together, you know, it was one fine party. That was, that was very nice. And, um, in fact, we moved from the studios to a hotel so it could continue. And, um, yeah, that was good fun. I've shown it to a few friends at home, but I'm hoping at some stage to have uh, just a private showing, but for a couple of charities that I'm raising money for, a, a hospice and uh, also a, um, an organisation in India that provides very, very cheap artificial limbs. Uh, they, they cost about £25. They actually give them away anyway. And I want to raise money over here because um, the equivalent over here would be totally out of reach of most people in India. So it, it was a good platform. If I was talking to people and, um, you know, in some cases seeking sponsorship, 
the platform of This Is Your Life is a good one, and pe you know, it's very popular, and people, everybody knew about it. So it gave you a little extra stamp um, on your on your CV, uh, extra bit of credibility, and uh, I, I think it helped in that way. I, I I still mention it in any publicity literature I've got, and if I go and talk. Uh, for instance, uh, still, I, I do, do a lot of corporate stuff still, but if I talk at a women's institute, uh, even the oldest people there remember, and, and a lot of the younger ones, but they remember This Is Your Life with great fondness. So, and, and they always go, oh, yes, if I mention This Is Your Life. They're, um, they're yeah, still very fond of it.